Our lesson for June 19, 2016, Lesson 3, Unit 1, which is titled, Judgment and Salvation. Our lesson title for this week is, The Joy of Restoration. Our devotional reading is taken from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 29 through 39. Our background scriptures is from the book of Genesis, Genesis 1, verse 1 through chapter 2, verse 3. And Zephaniah, chapter 3, verses 9 through 20. And our printed text is also from Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 9 through 14 and verse 20. In our key verse, Sing, O daughters of Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all the, the heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. Zephaniah three fourteen. Our lesson name as a result of studying this lesson is that the student should be able to tell a God proclamation through Zephaniah that God would bring the people to obedience. Assure ourselves and others that God would help us through our times of trouble and disobedience. And equip ourselves to pray for one another for God's presence and involvement in our lives. The joy of restoration. In our lesson, we have an example of God's promise of judgment in the earlier part of the book of Zephaniah. Realizing that when Zephaniah made these prophecies, that this was before that the southern kingdom of Judah has even went into captivity, but God was warning the people through Jephaniah that that judgment would come upon them because of their disobedience and because of their idolatry, where they had turned from serving the living God and they were serving idols. And, and so God... In his sovereignty, he made a promise that that he was going to judge them, but he also was going to restore them because of his faithfulness to his covenant that he had made to to Abraham. So, so we see now where Zephaniah is prophesizing about how that after the Jews had came from Babylon. And by their captivity, they were thoroughly cured of idolatry. But now at this time, God is now promising to turn to them again. But this turning would be still futuristic, where it would be established in the millennial reign of Christ. We have before us now a picture of the kingdom age, where Christ would be ruling on earth as their king. Verse 9 says, For then I will turn to the people a pure language, that they may all call upon the name of the Lord and to serve him with one consent. He said, For I will turn to the people a pure language, saying that they all will call upon the name of the Lord. Now, this does not mean that there would be one language for the entire world. The thought here is pure in the sense of the removal of the filthy, profane, and nasty language. And also that it talks about how that prayer in, in the spiritual would be offered, and that prayer is the spiritual offering in which God must be honored. And so, therefore, the purifying of the language in conversation is necessary. 
the language it shall be purified from all profanity, filthiness, and falsehood. That that people will have a decent conversation. That that their language which express the thoughts of our hearts, that it would be pleasing unto God. It would be a pure language. It would be a decent language. Psalms 19 and 14 says, let the, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in thy sight, O Lord, in my Redeemer. Just observe all the foul and damnable uh, uh, language that we hear from from from, from all sides of our, our, our society today that that there is no respect there is no uh, uh, shyness that that people are just forward with it they don't care what they say in in front of who they say it that there is just totally utterly disrespect disrespect towards God, disrespect towards elders, disrespect towards mankind as a whole. And, and, and our language needs to be cleaned up. But God says that that he one day that it would be a pure language. And then we as Christians say that, that, that out of our tongues, out of our mouths, should not be a, a salt and sweet water but it should be a pure language that come that we should speak in things that are pleasing the words of our mouth should be pleasing unto the lord and he says to to serve him with one consent this praise signifies that the gentiles having the gospel brought to them and they called by it and all speaking the same language should join in fellowship with one another and sing the praises of God together that we should agree in prayer to acts of God the same thing that we should be steadfast in the faith of the gospel and for it and with one heart in one mind, and that we find in Romans, excuse me, we find in First Corinthians one ten, where it says, "Now I beseech ye, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no division among you, but that ye be perfect." perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Then we have in Philippians 1.27 where it tells us to only let our conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. That whether I come and see you or else be absent, that I may hear of your affairs that ye stand fast in one spirit with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel. That God said there would be a time when there would be a pure language and, and that they we would all have come to serve him in one consent, that we would be unified in purpose, in heart, and in mind to serve God. In verse Ten we read, from beyond the river of Ethiopia, my supplements, even the daughters of my dispersion, shall bring my offering. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. Here they're talking about that which at that time was the furthest southern people with whom the Jews had contact. And they stand as a type of the whole world beyond and that the whole world is in mind here. That those that by reason of their distance had almost forgotten God and their obligation to him that that they had 
went away from God from from the time it is that it's coming today that God going to draw them back to him. Those that were dispersed by the reason of their disbursement under the token of his displeasure. The daughters of his disperse that is a far off. We have to realize that in 70 AD, where Israel was, the Jews were, they was completely, they was completely ran off of that land by the Romans. Before that, they went into captivity by, by the Babylonians and that many of them did not return to that homeland of Israel. But God said a day is coming where he going to call them. He going to call them back to him. Those who have, because of their distance from him, that they had turned away from him in a sense they had forgotten their obligation to him and had became consumed in the society, the surrounding society that they live in during the disbursement. And mankind as a whole, not only just the, uh, uh, the Israelites or the Jews, but mankind as a whole, after they came out of the ark and they established settlements in Mesopotamia, and that man was was gathered together in one purpose and in one language, but they rebelled against God. They rebelled against God up under Nimrod and said that they would make they would make a name for themselves. They refused to obey God when he told them to replenish the earth. They said they were gonna stay in one spot. So God at that time man was a one language at that and so God came down and, and confounded their language. And so they spread it out all over the earth at that time. And as they, in time, as they grew further and further away from God, they forgot about God and turned to, to their vain imaginations and made up gods in their own mind. But God said one day he's going to call the whole earth back to him. And so, and even the daughters, the daughter, his daughters of his dispersed, that is a far off, that one day God is, God is faithful. God's purpose will be accomplished in the earth. And, he, and he's going to call, he's going to call his children back to him. He says that, and he talks about how that his supplements, that 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 my supplements even the daughters of my dispersed will bring my offering my supplements these shall come with their humble petitions and they shall bring themselves as spiritual sacrifices to God Romans 12 1 tells us as Christians that that we are to what? That we are to present our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. And so in the future, we God is saying that his supplement, here they're going to come with their humble petitions and that they're going to bring the sacrifice of themselves. They're going to present themselves to God as living sacrifice and, and that and that with themselves they're gonna bring the sacrifices of what? A prayer, praise, and 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 arms with which God is well pleased. The sacrifices of praise is what we can offer unto God that that He is pleased that that we bring our what? supplications to him that the Bible teaches us that we ought to be anxious for nothing but through prayer and supplications let our request be made known unto God and the peace of God that passes all understanding will fill our hearts and minds is that we need to bring 
everything, all our needs before God, before God and, and depend upon him to supply our needs, not not be dependent upon ourselves, but to be totally, to learn how to be totally but, but tended, dependent upon God for all things. We find it in verse 11 where it states, in that day, thou shalt not be ashamed of all thy doing, wherein thou hast transgressed against me. For then I will take away out of the midst of thee them that rejoice in thy pride, and thou shalt no more be haughty because of my holy mountain. Thou shall not be ashamed of all thy doing. Because these evil and disobedient deeds will not be done, will not be continued in, but they will be repented of and forsaken by God's people. Their sins shall be forgiven blotted out, covered, and remembered no more. So they shall not be charged with them or condemned for them. The gospel message is that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever should believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Romans 5, 1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because Jesus has paid the debt, we have identified with him as dying for our sins. That Romans 8, 1 says, That there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. So therefore that because God has the, the sin has been confessed and, and forsaken that there is no condemnation for them. He says that our sins are forgiven. When we confess our sins we need to learn how to Understand and receive God's forgiveness and forgive ourselves and move on. He said, I will remember their sins no more. As far as is the east is from the west, so have he has remembered, he, so has he removed our transgressions for them. God also made a statement. He said, I will take away them that rejoice in pride. Not only the profane, those with the filthy mouth and, and foul language, uh, uh, who are ashamed to thy land, but he going to take away what? The hypocrites who appear beautifully outwardly, but rejoice in their pride. In their pride, they pride in what? They pride in the holy city. They... They was lifted up because of Jerusalem. They was they had pride in the temple, in the temple which had supposedly represented the presence of God, where God had chosen them as a people, as a people to dwell among them, to represent his dwelling among them. But they took that as a prideful thing. These were indeed Israel's glory. But they made them their pride and rejoiced in them as if they would secure them in their sinful way. We always talk about God's chosen people. Israel is God's chosen people. The reason why Israel was God's chosen people, it was not because they were better than anyone else. God chose them for a purpose. God chose them to be his witness to the rest of mankind so that they can 
be a light so that in that light that they shone was not their light, but it was it, it was the glory of God showing through them into a dark, idolatrous world that would bring the rest of mankind out of darkness into that marvelous light of the Lord. But because of God using them, they got the big head and and took pride in themselves instead of God. And so they thought just because they was God's so-called chosen people that they could do anything without God's just happened. Just because they had the temple, they thought that God's presence would be there with them at all times. In Jeremiah, when Jeremiah was prophesying to him, telling him how that God had sent Jeremiah to tell him that judgment was coming. The false prophets and the priests said, well, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, we have the temple of the Lord. This is impossible impossible for God to bring his judgment upon us because we have the temple of the Lord and the Ark of the Covenant and, and that we have all these things that represent God. But God does not dwell in the building. God's throne is in heaven and God is a holy God and God demands righteousness from all his people, not just from a few, but from all his people. And God will judge all, regardless of who we might think we are or where we might live. The United States, you have to be very careful. The United States needs to take heed to this because the first thing that we hear so often is that this is God's country. This country was was founded on, on Christian principles. But then look at the deeds of this country. Look at the laws that are being in, legislated now. Look at the lies that they tell about that, the things that they do, that they claim that they are doing it in the name of the Lord. God be not deceived. God is not marked. Whatever a man sowed that he shall also weep. God will bring judgment. God will bring judgment on all sin, on all nations, that all which turn away from the true and, and the living God. And that and that do not be secure just because you feel that you have been blessed. And, and rely upon these things for your righteousness and strength and conceited of ourselves and scornful of others. The Jews were scornful of others because they were the descendants of Abraham. They was the descendants of Abraham, and so they thought everybody else around them, all those other nations that they was they considered them as dogs and unworthy. Don't you know that God created all mankind, that he made mankind out of out of one blood. And so God is the creator of all mankind. And and John three sixteen that simply said that God so loved the world. That God so loved humanity, all humanity. No no particular race or nation. And so so it says that the, the prideful will be removed, that that they will be removed from within the very presence when God come through the Lord Jesus Christ and set up his millennial kingdom, that there will be no glory in man whatsoever. Jeremiah 9.24 says, But let him that glory, glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, said the Lord. 
we find in verses 12 through 14 where it states, In that day shall thou not be ashamed for all thy doing, wherein thou hast transgressed against me. For then I will take away out of the midst of thee them that rejoice in thy pride, and thou shalt no more be haunted because of my holy mountain. I will also leave in the midst of thee an afflicted and poor people, and they shall trust in the name of the Lord. The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity nor speak lies, neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. For they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. Sing, O daughters of Zion, shout, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all the heart, O daughters of Jerusalem. I will also leave in the midst of thee an afflicted and poor people. The proud shall be taken away from among her. A humble and despised people will be in the midst of her. Who refuse will be the Lord alone. The remnant will, will do no iniquity. Neither will they speak lies. They will feed and lie down in safety. None will make them afraid. Songs of praise will be with thanksgiving to the Lord. These songs shall be sung. And who has put away her condemnation forever? They will sing these praises unto God. For God has put away that he has removed their sins forever. We as Christians, we need to understand that God is a forgiving God and, and, and that God will bring peace to those who, who have made peace through the Lord Jesus Christ. And, 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 that, and, and that we can sing praises to him for, first of all, for our salvation, for, for forgiving us for our sins, for that, that taking a debt that we could not pay and, and a penalty that where we was worthy of death, but God loved us so much where God became a man himself and, and paid the debt for all mankind. And then so because of that, that, that we are now are the children of God and that God promises peace to his children and that there is no condemnation because our sins have been taken away forever and so we should constantly sing sing songs of praise with thanksgiving un, unto the Lord be thankful be thankful for 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 his mercy be thankful for God who is rich in mercy with his great love with which he loved us. Even when we was dead in trespasses and sin, he has made us alive in Christ Jesus. Be thankful and sing praises for his grace, for, 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 for giving us something that we did not deserve. And oh Lord, praise God for his mercy. For, for not giving us what we do deserve. And so it's going to be a time in the kingdom age when, when Christ comes and reigns where, where mankind going to sing praises. They're going to sing praises and they're going to sing songs of thanksgiving 
unto the Lord, and that they will be able to what? Feed and lie down in safety and in peace. It is so treacherous in the world today, even in, in our cities, in our nations, in the world, all you hear about is turmoil, trouble, mayhem, killing. Where is the peace? Where is the peace? All we hear about is tragedies, tragedies, and 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 and, and just is is sad. People have a desire for just peace, just to be safe, just to be safe in our own home. You cannot do that today. You need all types of security systems, burglar alarms, weapons, all this just for what? Just to have a normal sense of safety. It is not that. But the day is coming that in the kingdom, God is promising that the day is coming that there will be peace, that we will be able to to feed and lie down in safety and and will not be afraid. And then we'll be able to sing songs of praises with thanksgiving unto the Lord because it will be because of him he has established peace in the earth. Verse 20 says, At that time I will gather you. At that time I will bring you home. I will give you honor and sing and honor and praises among all the people of the earth when I restore your fortune before your very eyes, said the Lord. Those who had grieved for the reproach of Zion and who have sighed for her solemn assembly shall be gathered again. God has brought these people into the land, had driven out nations from before them, had established them, and that God had God had made a covenant that He would be their God and He would be their people, that that He would bless them. But He also told them that that if their disobedience took over, that He would also curse them and judge them. And so God just kept his promise, but then Israel sinned. But God is a merciful God. And so God now is promising is that her reproach of Zion, who shall be taken away, and, and that they one day would be gathered together. Her enemies shall be destroyed. And her children will have praise and fame in every place where they had been despised and reproached. That God was going to restore Israel. And that Israel would be the subject of praise among the nations of the earth. This would be their joy of restoration. But a unique title is that judgment and salvation. And so God, being a holy God, God has, has to, has to judge sin among all people, regardless of who they, they might be. But God's Judging sin and chastising his people is for a purpose. It is for a purpose so that so that they would return that back to God and turn from their wicked ways. And so this is the joy. After the after the judgment is over and complete. There is the joy of the restoration where God promised that one day that that Israel would be the subject and the praise among 
all the nations of the earth. Hebrews 12 and 11 states, Now no chastening for the present seemed to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yielded the peaceful fruit of righteousness upon them which are exercised thereby. God has a purpose. God has a purpose in in chastising his people. That is so that that the iniquity can be moved so that his people will be, his people will become a, a righteous people and that they might be able to dwell in peace with a loving, a merciful and a holy God. May God bless you and keep you.